Now I'm taking us back to our slides, our, our animation. I'm gonna walk us through this whole process, starting with metaphase one. And remember, you could do this whole thing four times. We saw the four different alignments that were possible if you have three homologous pairs. I forgot to tell you, and I can't write on this PowerPoint, but you can do the math. The number of arrangements for independent assortment, the number of different ways that those chromosomes can line up is two to the n power. In this case, it's two to the third power, two-thirded. Two squared is two to the second power, two to the three power. I don't know how to say that. Somebody help me, I'm sorry. I should know how to say that. <laughs> but two to the third power is eight, which means there are eight possible gametes resulting just from independent assortment in metaphase. Two to the 23rd power, it's like eight million. There's 8 million possible gametes from independent assortment alone during meiosis in your gonads aura right now. What? I would say pat your gonads, but maybe don't do that right now. Okay, shall we continue? Your gonads are amazing. We already know homologs split in anaphase one. I don't really care about all the other things, right? Although anaphase of mitosis is as simple as saying sisters split. Anaphase one of meiosis, homologs split. This is the moment that we say, hmm, we have turned from a, a diploid cell into a haploid cell. And you can count centromeres. Here are the two, at the end of telophase one, you have two daughter cells that have three chromosomes total in each one. They had six chromosomes before, now they have three. These are haploid cells. They still have sister chromatids, mm, ouch. So they have too much DNA, which is why we go through the next process. But who's gonna split now? Sisters gotta split. This mitosis, meiosis two, is identical to mitosis. We're just splitting chromatids. We're, spi split We're splitting sister chromatids. Let's watch. Here come our little whatevers, our centrioles and our spindle fibers. We're attaching, we line up on the metaphase plate just like normal, but do you see how this is like mitosis? Homologs line up independently. Well, in this case, we don't have homologs in the cell anymore, right? Because they're in the, the next cell. They got separated, poor guys. In metaphase, this looks just like mitosis with half the chromosomes. Metaphase two. Anaphase two, what's gonna happen? Sister's gonna split. Wait, my sister, I love you. Telophase two, we're just gonna go through the process of getting four daughter cells and you check them out and you're like, oh, totally. They're haploid. They don't have sisters. We have each chromosome we started with, we have here, we have four unique gametes. Do you get haploid gametes? And look how unique they are. Even this one, these two right here, both have big blue, big blue, little yellow, big blue, big blue, little yellow, but crossing over occurred in one of them. So they actually have a mix of alleles. Each one of these gametes, whether these are sperm or eggs, each one is unique. That leads us to, let's talk genetic diversity and just 
summarize, like, where does the genetic diversity come from when we go through this process of meiosis?